The views expressed in this presentation are those of the hosts and guests and do not represent the views of any lodge, grand lodge, appended body, or any other person or persons whomsoever. Welcome to Marty and Mark's Car Cast. <laughs> Two Masons in a car, not going to bed tonight. Mark, how are you doing? I am great. I got full of energy, uh, full of grotto love, and we are headed to Michigan, Michigan. Which is uh, funny. So we're going up there for the Michigan Grotto Association, and every time I speak, yeah, I'm currently Illinois State President, Mark's a junior pastor. So we're going up there to represent for their state's association. I always like to come up with a little quip or something to say, and I guess the only thing I really came up for for Michigan was thank you for giving people from Illinois a place to vacation. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even Michigan proper, it's UP. Is Lansing upper P? No, 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 Lansing is actually like right there kind oh, of. No, but dude, everybody, I go to the beach in New Buffalo basically because if I go to the beach in Chicago, I'm either getting shot yeah. or buying Modelo's from children. Yeah. I do that. Five dollars for two cans from the kids by Montrose Beach. It's a very good deal. <laughs> I mean, Holland, Michigan is very nice, though, too. Oh, Holland, dude, every part of Michigan is nice. To be honest, I'm going to try to probably convince you to swing by New Buffalo on the way to hit up this one brewery I like. Ooh, that sounds good. Just to kind of, you know, pop in, get a quick breather in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like two hours in, just maybe sit, you know, have a... Uh, it's a cool place. It's in an old converted church. It's called Beer Church. It's in New Buffalo. New Buffalo is still, you know, one of my little favorite lakeside cities. But yeah, no, so we're on the way there, just to kind of put this into perspective. We both worked full-time today, went to a Shio Grotto meeting. Now we're in a car driving to Lansing, Michigan. Yep, we are currently on 294, still in the Chicagoland area. So we got about three hours left in our drive. Uh, so that puts us to about 1 a.m.-ish. Well, that's because we have to switch to the Eastern time zone. Yeah, yeah. So. Anytime I go to the Eastern Time Zone, if I'm driving up to Indianapolis to hit up my favorite, uh, second favorite steakhouse, St. Elmo's. St. Elmo's is good. Uh, perfect. Uh, get the uh, shrimp cocktail. Yes. The cocktail sauce you would see through time. But no, I always hate going east. But here's, <laughs> but I love flying to Vegas because you gain two hours. It's like the flight <laughs> never happened. But you lose those two hours coming back from Vegas. And I can't even tell you how many times I have that city has like pretty much had a UFC fight with me that I didn't do too well in. I'm coming back, I'm broke, I'm tired, I'm losing two hours. Dude, go, whoa! Yeah. All right, some guy in front of us almost redid a Final Destination film with a flatbed truck. What are you doing, bro? Yeah, seriously. Oh, God. All right, yeah, but either way, time zones suck and we should all be on Central. <laughs> the whole globe, I don't care. So, all right, I'm actually going to start this with kind of a heavy question because we need some substance for this Mark and Marty's car cast. Yes, we do. So, Mark, okay. we all know you're Mr. Grotto. Yes, I am. You uh, you bleed your purple tassel. You've always been about this. I met you going on 10 years ago, and you were hardcore Grotto way before I was hardcore Grotto. You had a Mokana tattoo before we were even this deep in the game. Yes. Um... You are, to me, when I say who is the quintessential Grotto guy, it's Mark. That's just bottom line what it is. Because truth be told, I love Grotto, but I put a lot of my energy into the Royal Arch. Uh, High 12 keeps tricking me into doing more stuff. The Grand Lodge is trying to get me to do stuff. So I. But you're a Grand Chapter Officer, which well, congratulations, by well, the way. Yes, I was exempted to an uh, excellent Grand Royal Arch Captain, which has been five years in the making of appointments to get there. I'm very proud. But you're on your own ascension. Well, we're going to Michigan for fellowship and fun. You're also going there to inform them you're planning to do your fourth attempt at running for Grand Captain of the Guard for Grottos International. That is correct. So I'm going to say something, and I don't want you to take it the wrong way. I just want people to understand your vigilance. Some people, when they went up there three times and it didn't pan out, might feel they've gotten kicked in the bean bag a couple times and lost their luster. How are you more dedicated now than you were three years ago? How do you have this power? I think I have this power, not from, from just myself, but obviously from my wife, who I consulted immediately the day of the day after, um, the week after. I mean, we, we had talks about this, like just extensive talks, pretty much after Supreme in New Orleans. 
and um, I mean, I'll be honest, there are times where I'm just like, I, you know, like, okay, I'm, you know, three times I'm done, three I'm done. But after talking with my wife, she was like, you need to do this just one more time. You need to do this one more time. And then talking to, to you guys, you know, whether it's the uh, app refreshment guys, the um, Shail guys, whoever, they're like, you need to do this one more time. You know, you got this close and all that. And I mean, I'll be very frank and honest. It's tiring, you know, and it's it can be taxing. But at the same time, I'm having a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun these past four years traveling, um, seeing, um, you know, different profits and different places, you know, in, in Texas, Ohio, um, Virginia, you know, so so it, it's been fun just traveling, uh, meeting all these uh, different brothers and stuff. And, you know, it kind of humbles me, too, because at the same time, you know, how many times can you say as a Freemason, you know, hey, I know people from all around the country and they know my name, too. You know, and, and that's that's always the crazy part. So I think that's that's where I get the strength from is just, you know, meeting all these other prophets and um, and you just they, they, they give me the, the energy. Dude, that's awesome. And it's exactly kind of what I wanted you to say, because I know your heart's in it now. And I'm all right, you know, dude, we're going to be super candid on this. The first year you went up yeah. to run, yes, you did not get a great response from the voting. Members. Correct. You got a lot of love on the floor, a lot of, hey, I see you down the road, but not yet. Keep up the good work. Yeah. However, this, so from the first year, which I was sitting next to you, brother, and I, and I love you. And I remember when the vote came out, I, and I, I saw your face. I know you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted, but I get it. Yeah. But then this past year, dude, like you, you were in it. You were in the thick of it. Yeah. God bless Mike Neely and his lovely wife Abby. They're in it now. They're yep. doing their thing, and Props truth, to them. yeah. And truth be told, Mike's been doing it longer than you. Yes, yes. And, and that's the first thing I told you. I was like, "Hey, Mark, the world loves both you guys, but Mike, Mike's, Mike's been at it longer, so I, you know, everyone's got to wait their turn." Yeah. So, but, and and that was the one thing where I didn't want to be right up on you after that to be like, "Hey, Mark." there's a progression here and people are starting to really understand and appreciate you but i'm glad your wife kind of brought it up because i you know because again i don't want to be like right up in your ear right after something did or didn't work out <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like back in the day when they would interview knocked out fighters in the ufc like so you just got your ass kicked how do you feel about yeah, that yeah. oh it was a great fighter oh it was great yeah, yeah and you got to support and cuss dude that's i'm so glad rogan eventually stopped doing that he caught on but no but dude so you're coming at it you're happy you know, your branding on this. People know you. You've been traveling out here, and you're really going to Dave Corb's convention in Worthington, Ohio. And I know you're going there for the good of Grotto. You're going there to run. Anyone that's running has an equal and fair chance, and we're definitely sportsmanship first. However, I know the unofficial motto in our little circle has become finish it in Ohio. And, brother, th this is the right job for you. It, it, it really is, and I have full faith in you and i think you're only going to be better at it after working at it for because i think the first time you told me i'm gonna run for this was at the branson convention matt whistles convention i want to say that was 2019. that was 2019 yeah it was actually shiles first for foray into supreme because uh, we had just been chartered um just a few months earlier yeah so so yeah that was it, it, i think it was like the little bug they was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And then uh, and then going to Supreme in Louisville. Were you announced? Were I, uh, no, 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 I announced in, in Orlando. But Did you? I, yes, um, but I actually got the confirmation from Amanda in Louisville because she talked to Kelly Corb and they, you know, hit it off. And so it was just more of like, okay, like if Amanda's signed off on this, then let's go, let's do this. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, I do remember that now. I, I, you, these years get mixed up. They do. And actually, shout out to Louisville and shout out to Mike Hostler, uh, past Grand Monarch. That was when the country was in a grip of a wild shutdown. Yep. A lot of masonry wasn't happening. I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong. I'm not getting into anything political because politics are like a certain part of the body. We all have one and none of it's good. Well, I mean, I guess unless you're a hot chick, but that's yeah. another story. <laughs> I like hot chick politics. But no, dude, he actually made the ballsy call that we were still going to have our convention. And I felt that was just such an intimate year because attendance was down from like maybe 600 to 100, 200, because of obvious reasons. Yeah. 
but every but everyone that was there that weekend are friends like till today oh yeah oh yeah it was the that was the bond it was like and i remember we we're in louisville we're in the height of the pandemic half the town shut down they're having those riots um because you know civil unrest about racial injustice and things yeah and we just got together and had this most positive thing ever at the gold house on the erection of Grand Monarch Hostler, and that was man, that was the weekend. Actually, right now, uh, to kind of full circle things, we're going up to the Michigan Grotto Association convention. Uh, Ed McIntosh from Aries Grotto, that was his first grotto event that weekend, and we're going to see him get installed as state president right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was so cool too, because I mean, um, special shout out to Candace because I know she was doing like those um, those Zoom calls. Uh, you know during uh, during the lockdown and all that stuff so it was actually the first time I actually met her was uh, down in Louisville uh, so it was just actually kind of cool putting like a real physical face to you know like the from the people from behind the screens and stuff like that so so yeah Louisville was Louisville was nice just because I always said that they besides Florida they stuffed us all on one floor like one side was all the hospitality rooms the other side were all like the, the um, the grotto regular rooms so if we were allowed we were only allowed to ourselves i know which is so important because i just had the final walkthrough for midwest grotto association which will be in chicago the last week of september I'm not sure when you're going to be here in this podcast so i don't want to pimp it too much but i was telling the staff like hey you really need to congregate us by our meeting rooms just to keep it easier for us fair to the other hotel guests and i'm truly hoping they listen like those smart people at the golf house in louisville <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cause I mean that was that was that was a ruckus, but we had a lot of fun, and uh, and you were right, we were really close that year for for the people that showed up, and I think I mean even still to this day, cause I mean uh, there's pictures of of like us, you know, with Jay Hicks and and Corb, and um, I know I saw I remember Sparky was in that picture as well too. Yeah. So so yeah, there was just a lot of close people right. There. Actually, shout out to Sparky because he had lost a bunch of weight that year. And I didn't realize, I was, I was set up the Shiloh Hospitality Room, and we weren't quite open yet. And I have like two speeds in this world. I'm either the most jolly Santa guy in the world, or I'm the most horrible mean person. And he walked in, and he had lost so much weight, and he looked so good, and he was so healthy, he did such great stuff for himself. I was like, hey man, we're not even open, bro. <laughs> and, then was, and then he was like, oh, okay. And then my wife was like, dude, that was Sparky. Why are you being a Yeah. And I was like, I didn't even know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Sparky, you're in uh, Tennessee right now, and I love you. And you are just a cool dude, and I hope you're doing well. But yeah, there's so many people. It almost felt like when I think Grotto, I think of you know the history, the El Jalas, the classics. What is this, dude? Everyone on this road is insane right now. Oh, whoa, that's why. Okay. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> me and Mark fighting the good fight. What is going on with this truck, brother? He's not driving safely at all. No, he's not. Nope. I can't go this way because this guy is speeding. Okay, here guys, I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. We've never. Uh, recorded a podcast while we're driving <laughs> like the, the, the phone my phone's in the cup holder so it's not like you know <laughs> yeah so but no but i almost feel like so you had the original grotto stuff then you had the first what i call the first breath of fresh air which was all the dudes over in new york at azim yes and that Azeem. was the rise of victor man when that just rock star came out of the purple haze and all right it's a new era cool then shio came along we were the first, hey, we could really pull our bootstraps up and start something new. And to a certain degree, ever since, and I'm not, I, I'd almost kind of give a Z more credit, but we were, I think we were the first ones to show people you could create something, you can make it new, yes. you can make it fresh, and the Grotto machine has been open since then. Oh yeah, I mean, I know for us, we were the baby Grotto for the longest time. I want to say at least a year before oh, i don't even know who was open after us there was that one that was open around us somewhere on the east coast it was matt whistles guys i think yeah but i forget but then you had crazy crazo and line eye yeah there's some new florida stuff oh my god and, want... then, and then texas just blew up too yeah you know i gotta give a shout out to zara grotto right now z-a-r-a -A in florida so God, it's not like I'm throwing shade, but I'm not. <laughs> so I'm in their for their Facebook group, um, and I and I'm trying to get as many Facebook group groups as possible to see all the pictures and get all the good karma from people. They were having their state of meeting tonight, but they were having their state of meeting at an Olive Garden. I want bread six. I, I do too. I actually wrote on their post like there should be a 
some type of like award for the prophet that eats the most breadstick. Yeah, seriously. But I truly, I truly love crappy chain restaurants. I don't know why. Like I remember the other week, I had took my wife to Chili's. Yes. And she inferred that she might not order off the three for me menu, <laughs> and I had to ask her when we switched tax brackets. <laughs> But shout out to those guys. I hope Olive Garden went well. I hope you guys ate enough breadsticks to put a little grotto log cabin. And either way, when you're at the Olive Garden, grotto's family. <laughs> but yeah, but that whole new era started, and we've been in this beautiful, you know, world since then, where it's great, dude. And like so many guys came up, the Liar Grotto guys. I mean, Frank is a beast. Frank, yeah. Did you listen to that podcast he just did? Yeah, I saw it, but I haven't seen it. I, 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 you know, I keep, I gotta give it a better listen. I listen to it at work, but sometimes I just keep background noise in to keep my ADD in check, and I kind of, and I kind of get into spreadsheet hell, and I don't realize what I was just listening to. Yeah. But it sounded good, man. And one of the weirdest things since we started at Refreshment was so many people would be like, "Oh, we're starting a podcast," or, I, or I heard so and so is doing a podcast, and people would tell me that like I would be offended, like they're encroaching on what I do. Yeah. And I'm like, well, first off, bro, it's a free country. Second off, the worst thing Masonry did was let the internet tell our story before we could. Yeah, no, definitely. So right now, the more people that go, I'm going to create a newsletter, I'm going to create a thoughtful meme, yeah. I'm gonna post photos, I'm going to make audio content, the more positive content we could have with Freemasonry, the better. If dude, if every Freemason in the world was currently had a GoPro strapped to them, just rocking it, going to all these positive places, dude, I, I want people to see this, dude. So honestly, if you're out there, you can call your podcast at Refreshing Part Two. I don't care. <laughs> just get rocking, man. Get busy, get positive, and just have the time of your life. No, it, it's it's always cool and very humbling to hear when brothers say hey i joined freemasonry because of you guys like oh that's that's crazy oh, so, okay that happened to me once I, I think it was on a slate somewhere and someone's like hey i watched your show before i petitioned and i was like dude I, that's the heaviest thing in the world it really is it is it is and then like hearing hey i joined freemasonry because of us wow and then they're like hey i joined grotto because of you guys okay thank you and then i think the one that was that really hit hard was um, a prophet, or not a prophet, um, I, I want to say brother, but maybe a prophet too, I don't know. Uh, but he was, um, he was um, deployed overseas and he's like, you know, you, you guys help me go through deployment. And, and like, you know, like yeah, being overseas, I'm like, wow, that's, that's really, that's really humbling. And like, it just, I, I have no words for that. Nah, dude. Honestly, once you put your voice in something, dude, people will find it. And we and we need to find... See, I've always been one of the... See, I get it. The reason I get it is because I... And this is maybe going back to when I was a kid, and I would spend the fa my, my summers in the truck with my father. My father had a truck driver. And we listened to a lot of talk radio. At night, it was always coast to coast a, a, yep. a.m. Uh, during the day, there was definitely some Rush Limbaugh. So, I mean... You probably figured out my leanings. But that's cool. Oh, Jim Morrison, uh, gotcha. Okay, you, you, we'll get into that too. But <laughs> no, but you know, a lot of, but it was just always the talking. It was just always, the, and I've learned so much. And then when I started figuring out a lot of stuff that I like to listen to, um, a lot of it was originally Adam and Drew on Loveline. Oh, yep, yep. And yep. I still do. But dude, when you actually just listen to someone's voice, and it becomes the soundtrack to your day at work, your ride in the car, your, your life at the gym. It matters, bro. Yeah. And it's freaky that for a very small pop portion, very, very, very small portion of the population, we might be able to say we are that. And that is bizarrely humbling. It is. It is, it is very humbling. I mean, I, I know for me growing up, you know, like, um, you know, we could almost relate to like the Paul Harvey. Yep. You know, I mean, um, I, I know around here, Chicago, gosh, who are the Chicago DJs that... Um, well, Bill Victory, who's a prophet, that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, Man Cow was always huge. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, uh, the Haiti of B96 with Haiti and Jobo. Did you think they were black? I don't. I thought something. So the, the face doesn't match the voice. So, so yeah, so listening around the world or wherever you may be listening, Eddie and Jobo were, were part of the dance mixes with Julian Jumpin' Perez. And they were on the station that was mostly hip hop and R&B, and I will say they had velvety, sultry voices. They did. 
So when I saw the two most Jewish looking fellows in the world, <laughs> I did get confused. But they still have impact. I hope they're doing well, man. I really Which, do. Isn't one of them like your dad, like a, bro a brother? Um, I have nothing to back that up, but I'm going to go say yes, definitely. I thought, yeah, I thought, I, I know one know. of the radio guys is like their dad was, um, is a brother, Chicagoland brother, but I could be mixing it up with somebody else. Well, actually, you know, you want to go back old school Chicago, dude, our Eastern Star chapter, many other Eastern Star chapters were affiliated with the WLS Barn Dance. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't quite know how, but they'd get a check from it, and... This ended up, someone actually showed me some of the old stuff, so it wasn't just like a complete, like, Masonic story, like, you know, where, like, guys would come up to you and be like, you know, the Masons founded this country, then give you, like, a version of national treasure, and you're like, okay, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, no, dude, definitely, definitely stuff, man. It's wild. Well, look at the phone. Is this thing actually recording? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we are. Hold on. Yep. 20 minutes in. All right, beautiful. I just got scared. We've just been rambling for something that wasn't <laughs> on at all. Hold on, let's do a regular pause here, and we will be back. Definitely. And we're back. All right, so we are coming up to the Indiana State Line. They just thanked us for using the Illinois Toll Road, and uh, thank you for thanking me, but I prefer you wear lipstick when you... Yeah. <laughs> These are always a scam, dude. Because, like, when they said, like, this came out, like, they were like, to this deficit's done. This will never go away. And it's like when they are like, oh, the lottery oh, yeah. will fix the schools. Yeah. That, none, nothing ever gets better. No. No, they just expanded the tollways and made it permanent. And they took away our oases. Yes, they did. They used to have these cool bridges that had, like, little glass food courts. But like, if you don't live in Chicago, over 294. And I don't know why the most satisfying thing in the world was eating Panda Express while looking at the highway. But I yeah. knew it. Yeah, no, um, mine was the one at O'Hare, uh, uh, from Bensonville-ish, that area. Yeah, mine was a Hinsdale Oasis. Yeah, my, mine was O'Hare Oasis. I think the only one that I know that's left is out in Belvedere. And it's actually I'm still, Rockford, right? yeah, and it's still over the highway on I-90. Have you ever been to Rockford? I have. Rockford's actually an underrated cool city. It is like, it's, it's strange because it's still Illinois, but it just feels so different. Very much so. And they actually had a very young craft beer scene yeah. before things really popped off. Um, I See, I always know about B markets like Rockford, Bloomington, aside from masonry, traveling the state as a state officer for random things. I uh, I love seeing a lot of bands. I love seeing WWE and other pro wrestling. But I realized if you see them in Chicago or Rosemont, it's like three times the price than just driving to Rockford yeah. and seeing like Marilyn Manson or WWE in a tiny venue. And so yeah, and they're they're actually opening up a uh, Hard Rock Cafe um, if it's not already open. The casino. The casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they have a Hard Rock Cafe in the Hard Rock Casino. Yeah. Actually, we're gonna be driving past the Gary Indiana Hard Rock Casino yes, here in about 15 minutes. Yeah, because we're at Exit Four, so we're not even too far from the uh, Gary Hard Rock. Yeah. Dude, speaking of Gary, it's a, it's a fun little suburb, definitely Rust Belt as can be, it completely was almost as big as Chicago at one point. Dude, they got to stop sending people to look at Michael Jackson's old house. Why? It's, God, I'm going to sound like boomery right now. It's not in the best neighborhood, and it's in a neighborhood, if you get turned around, you might have some problems. Uh, and there's countless horrors. Go to TripAdvisor right now. Look up Michael Jackson's home, like, boyhood home in Gary. Dude, there's so many people that go there because they love Michael Jackson. They're passing through Indiana as the gateway to the whole country because it's the only way to circumvent the Great Lakes in a lot of ways. There, there's some people that have seen some sketchy things happen and not been super pleased going to that house. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I mean... I was in the Ozarks this past weekend for uh, for the Widow Sons uh, regional gathering, and um, that means we had to that means we had to drive through the St. Louis area, <laughs> East St. Louis, that area. Yeah, yeah. We had to make sure just to keep going, just so keep have, going. I I have had a lot of fun in East St. Louis and Saugit or Sauge or whatever that is in Illinois, where it's a lawless escape where the bars don't close. I still don't understand how that happens, but it did. Actually, we're about we're driving by my Moose Lodge right now in Chicago Heights. Oh yeah, but um, so but no, you were just at the Grand Gathering, which is like the Grotto's International Convention for the Widow Sons, right? Correct. Dude, yeah. Tell me all about it. Yeah. So um, 
So Cavs is my riding name. Widow Sons. Uh, basically, it's a, the motorcycle, uh, the Masonic Motorcycle Riders Association, um, which actually was started by a couple prophets from El Jala uh, back in uh, I want to say late '90s. I want to say late '90s, or early early 2000s. Though now it could be disputed. It's probably lost in the history and stuff like that. But uh, I think the person who started was Carl Davenport. That sounds right. Guy Carbono, Midwest president, he could tell the story, and I mean, because he loves telling the stories about all the old timers, yeah, stuff that happened. He, he could always explain it to me, but I was a little bit after all that happened, so it was always just like a rumor or like a mythos to me. Yeah, same. It was always like a kind of like, um, yeah, it, who knows if it was like a big fish story or whatever. But anyways, um, so so Brandon Widow Sons. Um, one out there, and every year we have um, which we either call a regional uh, gathering or grand gathering. Grand gathering is basically where everybody comes from all around the world. Regional, still kind of regional, but you know it's um, you know if we can't, if you guys came in from I think we saw ones from Canada, great. You know, like whoever wants to come out, come out. And this time this was out in the Ozarks, and which is always fun uh, and very hilly. And I believe it's Waynesville, Missouri. And no, it was it was great. Um, and I know in our group chat here, I always said like, hey, like the uh, one of the most intense degrees that I've ever been in, minus the um, Order of Temple, was probably like the Widow Sons degree. I've heard rumors it's very epic if you go that way and you go through the whole process to join one of the clubs. So you are part of what Widow Sons club? Uh, Knights of Tire. We're out of DeKalb, but. We have members that live pretty much everywhere of Northern Illinois, literally Northern Illinois. Oh man, there's so many good dudes in your club. I mean, Ed Walnick, awesome. Um, Rick Miller. Rick Miller, Ruckus, King, love you Rick, wish you were Grotto. Wish you were York right too. Maybe you are, but you're not active. I love you, stop being so great at being a Shriner and the little <laughs> guy come hang out with me. You and your wife are good people. You got married this year. My wife thinks it's the world of both of you. God bless you guys. Um, yeah, no, but dude, so how many guys did you ride out there with? Um, I rode out, actually, Miller, or his name's Ruckus, he uh, brought my bike down because I got a Sportster, and that's like a tiny-ass bike, no windscreen, um, bad seat. You know, this is, my, my Sportster is, like, really made for riding around town, not for long trips like this. So he, he brought it down, uh, but we had about, probably about, like, Nine or ten people. Okay. And this was like mostly from our chapter, but we had a couple. Um, I would say we had one, three, five, seven uh, chapter, and then uh, Sticky Rice, which I forgot where he's from. Um, Sticky Rice. That's his name. That's Sticky Rice. Name? Yeah. Was he owned like a ramen shop or something? No, it's uh, the big Filipino guy. So there was uh, four Filipinos there. We were all cooking. Well. As long as you were cooking, I guess I'm okay with it. Yeah. Which we might have to cut that out because I sound xenophobic. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's all. No, I saw the pictures. How many people were at the event? Um, God. I. 150 at least. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and, and that's not including, like, you know, um, our ladies, our kids, you know, stuff like that, which that's always like the biggest misconception. And is like, oh, I can't bring my kids, can't bring my kids. No, we have a lot of kids there. I've never understood the people that try to close their family off from this. Or some I know do it willingly because they want to escape, which I get, I don't get. But for the guys who are like, oh, I can't. No, dude, bring your kids, bring your wife, dude. Because the minute you make masonry a family thing, it's no longer something outside the house. It's just part of the life. No, yeah, definitely. And how are we going to get a second generation? Yeah. How, how is the Eastern Star going to flourish? How's anything going to happen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, our, our next generation of masons or lady masons, you know, Eastern Star or whatever, or um, or whatever, is is through us. Well, you got Eastern Star. You got Daughters of Mokana. Job's Daughters. Rainbow Job's, Girls. Yeah, there's, there's so many. Now, it might not be traditional Blue Lodge because the Master Mason title is reserved for men, but there are so many meaningful places for uh, women to be involved in this that it's, just, it's, it's unreal and it's just as beautiful as can be. It is. It is. And we are in Indiana. Welcome to Indiana. Lock your doors. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it, and I always think it's... Um, it's crazy when other brothers are like, oh, yeah, like, widow sons, uh, blah, 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 you guys are, you know, barbarians, blah, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, 
I always like see this one meme. It was like on on TikTok where it was like, um, you know, it's like, hey, listen, like I tell my daughter, if you ever get lost, find a biker. They will move heaven and earth to find to find your uh, your parents. Yeah, dude, bikers get a weird rap because. Well, hey, I think everybody watched Sons of Anarchy and didn't think that was a TV show, thought it was a documentary or something. Yeah. And, I mean, okay, of course, we Illinois, outlaw motorcycle clubs are a thing. We're headed to Michigan, which I believe is such a problem with that the state's still iffy on the Widow's Sons. Correct. But, dude, there's so many positive, like, pro-sober, pro-Christian, pro-everything bikers, dude. Like, I mean, I get it. That's, I, I when... When the look is safety gear, these vests and all this other stuff, I mean, I know it's become a look, but dude, this all really evolved from safety gear. Yeah. So, I mean, I get why, and I know we have a lot of brothers in our fraternity there in law enforcement that have gone through years of training where they put that stereotypical biker up and they say, look for this. I, I know that, dude, but it is such an affinity culture that could do such positive things, and it routinely does. Oh, it it, it definitely does. I mean, especially for, for Widow Sons where... Um, you know, we have, uh, we have toy drives and, um, just a lot of charity stuff, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very family focused, um, fraternity of, or, you know, little sect of, of Freemasonry, which I think any kind of body is very family focused. No, no, definitely. Sorry. Start checking my text messages. Like, this is like the one thing that's bad about not having the camera on me. Like I'm actually trying to do work emails right now while I'm doing this. But, no, dude, I get you. And you have to be family-driven on everything. So, was this your first Widow Sun event of this size? Um, no. Are, um, are you counting the one that was in Illinois? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm counting the one in Illinois because uh, this is my third one. And I've been in Widow Suns for four years. So, yeah, this is my third one. And this one was kind of on, on the smaller side. Um... But do you think people just want to feel in the Ozarks or what's up? Um, I, well, I think part of it too is a kind of like the regional, so it's not as like you know people are extremely drawn to, to come out. Oh, this is a regional. It one? was a regional okay. one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and you know, obviously, like most of the guys that we put through uh, for the uh, for the degrees, a lot of them for, were from all around Missouri. You know, like from Cape Girardeau and 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 stuff that like that. How you pronounce that town? Cape Girardeau, yeah. Okay, so check. So I'm in logistics. I work in trucking, as people know. I'm in the some or maybe you don't. I don't know. But I always see that town, and I send trucks there, and I do stuff, and I've never really... I've heard so many mispronunciations, I never knew what was right. So Cape Girardeau. Cape Girardeau, yep. And um, I, I only know that because I have a friend that named... Uh, that, her name's Hannah, so hey, shout out Hannah. Um, she lives out She lives out there, and um, yeah, it's uh, the, the boot heel of Missouri. I always like to the, call it Missouri. The boot heel? The boot heel. Okay. The boot heel. So that's cool, man. It's actually kind of funny, so unbeknownst to each other... While you're in Missouri enjoying a vacation, you were in Missouri. I was in Missouri enjoying a vacation, and it was a little bit Masonic itself because I am a giant literary dude. I love yes. I love I love the musings of a lot of people, but Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, is one of my all-time favorites for several different reasons. And we went down to Hannibal, to his hometown, to see all the Mark Twain stuff. Nice. And it was pretty cool. Got to do the uh, riverboat tour, which was basically just your standard touristy boat that took you to all the different parts where he wrote the stories about. This is the island they went to. You know, stuff like that. But it was so cool to see all the Mark Twain stuff and Samuel Clemens stuff. I wish someone, I, I don't know if it's if that should fall under Grand Lodge in Missouri, or maybe I missed it. I wish they had a little bit more Masonic stuff there because he's such a celebrated Mason, and he, you know, and he encapsulates so much of our culture too. I really, and it could be there. Someone at me if it is there and see if I wish there was like a like Masonic memorial. Like yeah, that. yeah. I, you think that? I mean, like, I know if if I had a famous brother that you know like really changed the world, especially in in, in the world of literature, I would definitely have something where it's like hey here's his books here here's his apron um here's the bible that he um you know put his hands upon something yeah and now keep in mind i didn't see everything there's actually so much mark twain stuff that you probably could go a couple times and not repeat which is very impressive yeah so and plus i didn't realize this when i went down there there was a giant oh we're passing the gary hard rock casino oh yeah there is um there was a giant steampunk festival happening. <laughs> That's awesome. And it, it was pretty cool. There was like a pirate circus and all these elements. So 
I will say I did lose a little bit of time where I should have been seeing Mark Twain stuff just because we decided to enjoy the festival too. Okay, okay. But good part is I kind of told my mom how fun it was and she wants to go back with us. So I, I, I would go back to Hannibal again to celebrate Mark Twain. Yeah, um, so I know when we were out in Missouri just driving around uh, to some state park, I forgot what it was called, we stopped at a gas station at a Casey's, looked across the street, and we saw a lodge. Oh, was that where you took those pictures? Yes, that's where I took the pictures, did a little live in. So, yeah, we saw a lodge and an OES chapter, so we decided to, to take a picture out there. Yeah. And one of my favorite uh, rides to actually see Masonic Lodges randomly is Chicago to New Orleans. And I've done this a few times. And you run past a few shrines and just different stuff on the highway where you just see like lodges. It's the weirdest thing. There's only a handful, but they're all just, you know, just down that way. And it's always so cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like you get excited. It's like the way people go to Disney World and freak out about <laughs> hidden Mickey's. We're like, ah, square compass. <laughs> And actually, anytime I drive into some random town, I don't know, and there's like a Masonic little sign, little elk sign, little moose sign. Oh, yeah. I love right, looking for right, that. Honey, we're safe. Our people are here. Yeah, I love looking for that. I'm like, oh, look, there's an OES chapter. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, man, that is so awesome. Dude, I'm so glad. It's cool that you went out there, dude. Yeah, no, it was it, it was fun. Um, it's um, it was it was nice to obviously get away because it was Labor Day weekend, um, and and the fun thing too was on the way back we just we you know we left a little bit early, and we it was like about a six hour drive, but we really just took our time getting home. We actually stopped at both Wally's, uh, one in Fenton and then the other one in Pontiac. So okay, that is wild too because so again I'm gonna kind of get Illinois with you guys, but there's a place called Pontiac, Illinois. It's along Route 66, probably about an hour, hour and a half south of the Chicagoland Joliet area. Yep. And they have this beautiful, best way I could describe it would be... Bucky's. Il yeah, it's Illinois' love letter to Bucky's, and it's Wally's. And there's always a joke, because when you go down to Grand Lodge, Grand York Ride Sessions, or so much stuff that's in the middle of the state, every Mason either stops at on the way to or on the way back to Wally's. Yep. And it's so cool that you went to the other one, which was in Fenton, Missouri, and that one actually has pizza, you said? Yeah. yeah. So I needed to just pretty much use a bathroom break because they have really good bathrooms. Shout out to uh, the Wally's workers out there. Well, actually, I there's a sign going northbound of 55, I think right when you get to Bloomington, maybe, that says, like, Wally's 30, like 30 miles away, clean bathrooms, worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. Like, where they're outright saying, like, hey, I know you got a half-hour drive or whatever, but if you're thinking about pulling off, don't even do it. Yeah. This is it. It's yeah. going to be worth it. Yeah, so I had, to, I had to use the bathroom and stretch my legs a little bit because I knew this was kind of like a long stretch between that and uh, Bloomington. So we're like, all right, let's go, let's, let's go to Wally's. And we need to just get stuff from there anyway. Walked in, and this was actually kind of like a different setup. It was more of like a long hallway type of a thing. Okay. Um, but they still had like the same, you know, same same amenities and stuff like that but they had pizza and I was like they have what they got pizza so I had to get a slice of supreme uh, supreme pizza they had you know sausage and all that stuff and they actually like if you were willing they were willing to make you like a, a whole pie for yourself all right so I got a Wally story too to go with this one so not not the weekend you were in Missouri but the weekend before that a lot of us were in the Springfield area for the Illinois State High 12 Association meeting. Yes. I drove back the same night just because I had to work on Sunday. And so I was in the car with uh, Chris, who's the junior past president of our High 12 Club, Shail, And then for my other High 12 Club, I'll say Ricardo and the world infamous Hollywood were in that car. We left at way separate times, but we somehow met up at Wally. <laughs> and this is a shout out to Hollywood, you beautiful man man peach pear because you always keep me guessing that dude is the most picky pescatarian eater yes he is i remember we had a steak fry at the eastern star the other week you got a, he had corn we had like five he's like he's like i don't want a steak or potato because i said five years of corn i mean they obliged him but that's his vibe right and he loves that so we wander into the wallies i see him and he's talking to some fellow there but i walk up to go to say hey look it's crazy we ran into each other he was purchasing $97 worth of gourmet beef jerky. <laughs> what? And I was so confused because I was like, bro, aren't you like a pescatarian or a vegetarian? And you're always getting on me about what I eat and 
all this craziness. And he's like, well, yeah, but I'll eat beef if it's jerky style. And I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> I don't know how that works. So if anyone's at home and you're a vegetarian, pescatarian, but you can eat beef if someone jerkies it, you just let me know. Oh, well, I mean, Amanda has a friend who is a vegan, um, not because of like, I think it's more for her diet than, than like, you know, hey, animal rights, blah, blah, blah. But she uses beef tallow for moisturizer. I don't know. Okay. What, on her body? Yeah, on her body. Like as, as lotion? Know, I was going to ask you what she moisturizes, but that changes this whole podcast. Yeah. I'm not even going to do that. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, Wally's, Wally's was good. Um, there was a lot of, you know, knickknacks and all that stuff. So we stopped there. And then next thing you know, um, we, we stopped in Bloomington. We had uh, Epiphany Farms, which was amazing. Oh, my God. Okay. So well, tell me, Epiphany Farms, even though I think it's a cult, and I have reason to believe that. Oh, God, yeah. Tell me your whole Epiphany Farms, ex your, tell me your whole experience, because that was a life-changing culinary adventure for me. Oh, there was, because the first time we went there was when uh, Pat Robin, uh, was he incoming or outgoing Most Excellent Grand High Priest? That's when he was incoming Most Excellent Grand High Priest, and his big dinner that he wanted to do was the 11 or 10 course pairing where you got an appetizer, a couple different appetizers, your entrees, but everything came with a wine or a beer. Yes, yes. So that was our first time there, and it was just, I mean, and I were blown away. I mean, like, hell, we still talk about their gazpacho to this day because it was just so freaking and, good. And that's cold tomato soup. It is cold tomato For soup. For years we've been talking about cold tomato soup. That's insane. Yes. So let's take a break right now. We're at about another 20 minutes, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about Epiphany Farms. Alright. And we're back. Alright, so Epiphany Farms. Um yes, that was life changing. That was life changing. So yeah, so it was um Pat Robin, shout out to him. Well sex and grand high priest. Uh he he invited all of us out to, uh, to dinner and Yes, it was like what eleven course tasting dinner and all that stuff and it was it was amazing. It was one of the most thorough and extravagant and well explained and the thoughtfulness of the chef coming out to explain where the beef was from, where the pork was from, what type of grass they fed it. Dude, that guy was so educated and so and he presented so well that even if it turned out all that was a lie, I'm still hook, line, and sinker. That place is amazing. Yes. And this is all in Bloomington normal. Like Blono, baby. Yeah, Blono. Like this should have been easily like on the Gold Coast of Chicago. Yeah, but then we couldn't afford to go there. No, no. We yeah, we would that that's like a three price um price uh tax brackets above us. Yeah, but dude, there's so many great but I even when you said that that's in Blono, dude, if you look around like the Lariat Steakhouse in Peoria like, there's so much great stuff in these little places, but Epiphany Farms is super on that list. It is. It is. So, yeah. So, when we were like, okay, <clears throat> on the way home, it was, din it was around dinner time. We're like, all right, we need to eat. So, let's let's go somewhere. And we looked up Epiphany Farms. And we're like, yes, we forgot about that place. Let's go. So, we went there, and Amanda got some, some sushi, which, um, if I want to be nitpicky, sushi was really good. Their cuts were a little sloppy, like it wasn't even, like it wasn't even cuts. So that's that's Mark being nitpicky. Filipino, not Japanese. I know, uh, but I had uh, the pork belly ramen uh, soup. Oh my god! Oh, the, the pork was just amazing. Dude, anytime you say <clears throat> pork belly, you could say like old cardboard and pork belly with balsamic drizzle, and I'd be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, and so we had G with us too. And, you know, usually, like, when you ever look at, like, the kids' menu, it's always like, oh, yeah, you know, we uh, serve fine, fine dining, three-star Michelin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what, what do you have for kids' menu? Chicken fingers. Not here. No. They served us. They served G, and she ate it all. An eight-ounce portion of salmon. She ate it all? Yeah, she ate all the, she ate all the salmon. And then they had um, some quinoa and some roasted vegetables, which she... she That's fine. Um, she, she didn't care for. She had a little bit of bites, but... Three, two, From one. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know where it Are stopped. We starting completely over? No, 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 no. It, it saved it. It saved it. Oh, all right. So yeah, dude. It's so, 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 so uh, wherever it cut off, G had had the salmon, full, full blown salmon, and it was the kids menu salmon. Like, who does salmon for the kids menu? They do. Awesome people. But the reason I said Epiphany Farms is probably a cult is. The first time I heard about it is when Pat Robin came up with it. We're all going to go. We're going to celebrate. We're going to do this very luxurious meal. 
And while I think what we paid was 110% worth it, there was a little bit of sticker shock. Yes. So I was like, all right, well, if that's what he wants. I love him dearly, and we're going to do this. But I wanted to see what I was getting. So they, I found out their YouTube page. They have a YouTube page? They do, yeah. Oh, okay. And they talk to some people that work on their actual farms and in their restaurant. But everyone they talked to kind of came off like an NPC that was explaining <laughs> like how great wheatgrass is to you. And I was like, yo, this is a goddamn cult. That's funny. <laughs> I think they're really just honing in on their craft and they love what yeah. they do and it shows. And granted, the, these guys are not paying us to say this. This is all us, 100%. No, no, they're, they're not paying us. It's, it's a cool place. And, you know, actually, I sent a family to Epiphany Farms once. I was in Atlanta, Illinois at the Museum of American Giants. Google it. It's a place that preserves wacky roadside stuff. What the hell am I looking at? Is those that, Christmas trees? No, that's not Christmas trees. Are they... Is, no, that's not the hotels. I think... Is that the oil refinery? I think it's the oil refineries. Okay, well, the oil refineries... Oh, there is, there is like, like the weird... There's Christmas trees. Strand right? Christmas trees up there, yeah. Yeah, but they're red, white, and blue. This is just... I'm sorry, guys. We're getting so road distracted. But no, so I ran into them at the Museum of American Giants, which roadside, Museum Route 66, go yep. check it out, which is there again. They were coming from this awesome arcade in McLean County, Illinois, and they were going back towards normal because that's where they lived. And I don't know how we got talking about food, but I started talking about Epiphany Farms. And they decided that they were going to go there after. So they had never heard about it, even though they lived by there. So I guess all we do now is walk around and chill for that cult of a restaurant. <laughs> you know what other place? I've been going to other couple of Masonic hangouts. So I was talking about how I was down at Illinois High 12 Association. I had to take out Chris Nigren, who I never has never really made down to the big grand sessions, to a bunch of the bars and like restaurants that we haunt. So I was like, come on, we're gonna go to Open and Isaac's. Oh jeez. We're going to the Celtic Mist, we're going to Floyd's Thirst Parlor, we're going here, we're going there. Oh god. So I ended up like running through this town on like like on the depressed Rust Belt pub crawl of life. <laughs> and it was so interesting, man. But it was but you know, it's like what are these great places, dude, like, that you just love that you go to? So last time I was in Michigan, I was up there for Prince Hall, Royal Arch, and great time. And they had their past high priest night at this place called Sinbad's on the River. And it's awesome place, low-key. You'd really never know about it because it's a little marina restaurant. Yeah. But we had so much fun. They had really insanely good uh, clam chowder, mm. uh, steak, but it's like... One of the best parts of traveling in Masonry is finding these little sorted restaurants or bars you would never go into. Oh, yeah. No, I love... I, and I think that's one of the greatest things, too, about Masonry in general, too, because it's like, you know, you're with, with other brothers, their ladies, stuff like that, and you guys are pretty much exploring the town together, you know, and... Oh, yeah. Hey, construction. And, I mean, like, it's it's always cool just like, hey, we're walking in and we don't know what we're walking into, but, hey, let's just experience this all together. Sometimes that's for the best. Sometimes that's for the worst. Yeah. One time I actually, this was Grand Lodge, 2014 or 15. Okay. God, it's 10 years ago. And <laughs> I uh, I went in there and went out with a bunch of dudes. within one hour. And we ended up in this goth club we didn't mean to be in. It was like an industrial dance goth club. And I'm with like 10 older gents in their brown suits. And yeah, we were in there and we were definitely not their normal clientele, but everyone was super cool. But uh, yeah, did not mean to end up at an industrial goth dance <laughs> right. But we did. God bless us. I swear I'm not going off the road. It's just this construction. He is uh, going off the road. Okay, I'm going off the road. Uh, Mark, we were talking about stopping for Jesus. I know. Oh, my God. It's all this construction. They have this whole thing crooked right now. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about for uh, stopping off real quick for a quick sip of refreshment. You still good to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we're 21 minutes from Beer Church, which I want to show you. All right. Are they going to be open? Uh, That's a question. Because it's... So they close at midnight, and we arrive oh. at 1044. Oh, yeah, we're good then. Yeah, so we're just going to pop in. Nothing crazy, but I want to pee anyways. Yeah, that's fine. And I got to fill up on gas anytime soon, soon, but... Yeah, well, yeah, I wouldn't mind a bottle. Yeah, let's get a beer. Let's use the restroom. Let's get, like, a bottle of water, and let's wrap up this ride, because we're actually making killer time. Yeah, we are actually making killer time, so... It helps when you drive in the pitch black. But, yeah, no, dude. So, I mean, 
either way, guys, we just decided at the beginning of this ride that, we, hey, we should use our time properly. And actually, to go back to my love of Adam Kroll and Dr. Drew, there was a while they were doing a little tour, like a Love Line reunion, Q&A, meet and greet, like evening with, and they recorded a bunch of pods on the way from town to town. Oh, really? Yeah, and I love how it came out. And that's why when we got in the car, I'm like, hey, does your phone record good, man? We should pound out a pod right now. Yeah, I mean, it's I because I listen to uh, Steve-O's Wild Ride, and he does the same thing. He just records on the back of his RV. Did Tom Green do that, too? He probably does. Everybody does podcasts now. Well, Tom Green actually was very early to the podcast. Tom Green is actually such an intelligent dude. But if you actually, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, yeah. Gives tons of credit to Tom Green for really starting this all up. Oh, really? Oh, my God, yeah. Because Rogan did Tom Green's podcast before Rogan had a podcast. Mm, okay, okay. And then Rogan became the king of all spoken word. Yeah. You know, one time I did, he I, I read something on the internet. And it was from a hater, but I was also like, crap, I can see it. <laughs> so I, I don't think there's anyone that listens to our show that isn't pretty aware of who or what a Joe Rogan is. Yeah, seriously. So, Joe Rogan, as we know, UFC commentator, legit karate or taekwondo badass, whatever he is. But definitely a, definitely a tough dude who talks to a lot of intellectual people. Someone said his show, and I read this on Reddit, which no one ever is anything positive. Oh, God. It's the dregs of humanity. Yeah. But someone described his show as a guy who took over a country because he was a warlord. But once he took over, deeming himself the king of all intellectuals and having smart people brought to him. And I was like, oh, crap, that is kind of his show. Yeah, yeah. I, like Once I read that, I was like, oh, God, I hate anyone on Reddit, but that is a good point. But I know he's actually called out some people, though, too, you know, like the, that, you know, would try to espouse to, hey, I'm smart with this. But Joe's like, OK, so how about, you know, this kind of point or that kind of point? Like the um, what's that one guy? Um, Adam, Adam from uh, Adam Ruins Everything. Like he got destroyed on Joe Rogan, Rogan's podcast. If you're going to go on a show like that, you need to be ready to be on the counter offensive. Yes, you need to have your facts straight and, and all that. There's actually a clip. Now, I don't know where you stand on Bill Maher. He's, he can't be good. He's, 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 it's weird because I think he's starting to see some of the craziness. Well, Bill Maher, Bill, Bill Maher to me is currently like what shows really how things went. Because I don't think Bill Maher's content has changed. I think no. the world's changed. Correct. And they repositioned him, but that's a whole other story. Yes. But he is pretty good at confidently throwing straw man shit out there. Yes. And, and that's okay. I, I, li I listen to anybody. I listen to goddamn everybody. Yeah. So that's fine. But Bill Burr went on there and just ripped him apart. Yeah. And yep. Bill Burr, again, great comedian. He's he's an intellectual. I don't think he's intellectual in that way, but just because he's so good at you know the comedy and the quick thinking, like he just ripped him apart on a bunch of stuff. It's interesting to watch, man. Hey, and I think that's part of being a comedian too is just really knowing your surroundings, knowing your people, feeding off your audience and stuff like that. You know, I think like one of the the, the ones who I think off the top of my head right now is Andrew Schultz, who can really just like play a crowd. Yeah, Andrew Schultz is good. But, dude, there's countless good people. And, like, with all these ability for podcasting, all these platforms, the cool stuff is when people, like, get together that should have no business being on the same platform and talking. I watched a podcast with Neil Tyson DeGrasse or DeGrasse or whatever that dude's name is. Yep. And Violent J from the Insane Clown Pop. <laughs> no, yeah, they did a pod together, and I wish Violent J was a little bit more lucid because <laughs> I'm old school juggle. I'm like, come on, dude, I know you're smart on that. But, yeah. No, but it's like, what world are we in? We can bring these people together, and it's we're we're at a time that people really need to be more fond of, because one day we're gonna we're gonna look back at Theo Vaughn's podcast. Yep. And that he interviewed Post Malone. Yep. Donald Trump uh -huh. and like a lunch lady all in a row, and that this is this is a reasonable platform where you can speak to an average person, a former president. And probably the current biggest crossover country hip hop pop music star ever, and it gets similar views, similar respect, and it all makes sense. Like it completely destroys the idea of any caste system, dude. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Like, dude, Jerry only was talking about it. 
from the Misfits, and he was doing a thing where he said, it was, I think someone was trying to talk about how you don't make as much money in music, and he's like, yeah, but this is like the dream now, because you could do whatever you want. You could self-publish on Amazon and go best-selling. There's no more rules. Yeah, is it just the old formula that they do work? Is it there anymore? No, but there's so many more doors you can open if you have the drive to open those doors. Yeah, yeah, and there was this one video I was watching where, you know, it's like, hey, how do, uh, you know, how do you be successful in, you know, in the YouTube podcast world? And if you guy, find out, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the guy basically said, like, listen, like, obviously you got to start, you just got to start just making content every single day. Oh, yeah. And it's like, expect to suck. Expect to suck for the longest time. Expect to suck for your first 100 videos. But next thing you know, you're going to find your groove. You're going to find your people. And then there you go. So it, it's just, you know, em, embracing the suck. You know that you're not going to be good for the first whatever. You're going to cringe at yourself. But, hey, you know what? You're learning. You're growing. And, yeah, and, and yeah I mean, kind of take it full back circle. It's like it's basically it's it's Freemasonry. You know, like when if if, if you're in um, in Lodge, you know, and it is your first time obligating, you're going to suck. You're going to suck. But if you take it, learn it and learn from your mistakes, learn from your mentors, you'll be better. And, and that's a good thing with life, man. Dude, just keep hustling and keep your chin up, dude. It, it's all going to work out no matter what media that you hop into. Dude, that Franciscan hospital, doesn't their logo kind of like a t-shirt from afar? It does look like, it looks a, like a white t-shirt. It's so I wish you guys were seeing, oh my God, there's a Taco John's that loves truck stop. Woo! I wish you guys were seeing everything that we were seeing on this beautiful dark highway, but you're not. But no, dude, that's, you know, that's definitely life. You know who doesn't get enough credit because they're kind of strokes? Huh. Uh, the Paul brothers. Brothers. Jake and Logan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because, all right, whatever. You can hate them. They're kind of strokes, whatever. I got you. But their dedication on their come up, like of how they actually hustled and did it, is super admirable. Yeah. Um, yeah, Logan should have went to the um, <laughs> suicide force in Japan. Bad luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jake should fight a boxer his age. And the one time he did, he got his ass kicked. So now he's fighting a senior citizen, even though Mike Tyson's the greatest ever. So, I mean, I get why people can be like, hey, those guys aren't the guys. But if you look at their work ethic, they're not the guys. They're still the guys because of that. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Like, back when I was promoting uh, concerts and managing bands and stuff, I, I was talking to this one cat at a studio. I was trying to think of what rapper studio I was at. It was a little bit prevalent in Chicago for a while. Somewhere in the West, I forget. And he told me, that, like, the, the dopest thing I... <laughs> It was something that I don't know how to describe. He told it to me, and it stuck with me. He said, the greatest musician will never be heard because the greatest musician is focused on being a great musician and not marketing himself. Mm. And I was like, ooh, god damn. Yeah. There's probably a million painters that are rocking, but they're just sitting at some house somewhere full of paintings and they're showing them. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. You need a healthy balance, dude. You actually, because you need to promote yourself. And that's the one. I mean, like, like we're living in a world right now where this has been the weirdest summer for movies ever. Deadpool, hit, huge, biggest ever. Twisters, yep. biggest hit ever. The remake of The Crow, about to set like records for being the worst ever. Yeah. And what was that other bad movie this year? Oh, there's a lot of bad movies this year. Um, God, I forgot. Oh, there's been so many. I know, but I know The Crow bombed. Oh, that last Indiana Jones bomb. I don't even know when that came out. But it's so weird where we live in a world that will still go to theaters to be like, oh, well, streaming killed everything. I'm like, well, then why didn't it for Deadpool or Twisters? You're, yeah. you're lying. Yeah. You know, people will support things. It is the weirdest thing, dude. Well, a, a lot of it, though, too, is just, you know, it's really, did the studios listen to the fans or did the studios listen to themselves? Because you know, for for Deadpool Wolverine, you know they, you know they, uh, Ryan Reynolds really listened to the fans, kept it really close to the source of the comics. You know, um, Twisters, same thing. You know, it was more of like, hey, let's just take the take the viewers out and let them, you know, enjoy Twisters for the next two hours. It's not like you know, you know, depress them with uh, global warming, climate change, blah blah blah. You know, it's it's more of like let's just throw Twisters in there, Top Gun. You know, for example, that was more of just, hey, let's just enjoy uh, fighter yeah. planes and, and Tom Cruise. 
Dude, no, dude, and that's completely it, dude, because they actually were giving people what they want, and I get that completely. And I'm not trying to go as a 38-year-old man and explain why Marvel sucks now, <laughs> even though I could, but it's, you know, it's wild stuff, dude. And people know what they want, and that's if that's why a lot of stuff will truly still work, and when it doesn't work, they're like, well, because of this, I'm like, no, dude, because if, if it really worked and it really rocked, it always will, man. Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta be. You just gotta be true to your fans, and, and they'll come out and support. And next thing you know, you got you got a Deadpool Wolverine where it's like making making billions. I know. I think we're we're pulling up on South Bend, Indiana, right now. That's the home of Notre Dame, right? Yes. So, uh, past Monarch, Alonzo, and Blair from ROES chapter. God bless both of them. Yep. Uh, they have their new amazing foster child. Uh, I'm not gonna say the baby's name, but it's the greatest little. But it's an awesome baby, and we love you guys. They went to see Garth Brooks out here. What? Huge, really? Yeah, they're huge country fans. That's funny. And uh, I want everyone at home to look up Garth Brooks as a serial killer. Because as far as loosely tied things together by a bunch of random little oddities, you spend about 15 minutes looking up Garth Brooks as a serial killer, it all starts coming together. Oh, those weird conspiracy theories. Yeah, I it love is. them. Yeah, so look up that. And just because I think it died out too quick, look up that Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer. <laughs> that, 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 that's another one. That was great. I remember hearing that one. Um, I know we referenced the uh, Jim Morrison is Rush Limbaugh. That's your new thing. But see, the only reason I believe that one, look up what the Laurel Canyon really was, man. That was a whole government psyop. Yeah. And they created that whole hippie movement. Because if you look at Janis Shoplin, Jim Morrison, uh, Jimi Hendrix, too, if you look at a lot of the people... They had weird military ties in their family. Yes, they did. And they had a giant military base in Laurel Canyon. Uh, the Mamas and the Papas, dude, there's books on that. And I'll probably send Wes the link so we can kind of put him up with this. And, yeah, but, dude, there's a lot of stuff out there. But I could completely believe Jim Morrison became Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Uh, th there was that one because um, there was a TikTok video I sent to you guys where it's basically like, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, like, you kind of age him, whatever, okay, it looks like it. But then it's like. There's moles, like same exact moles in the same exact places, and like his ear structure is the same and, and stuff like that. So, um, or that, um, was it Elvis became that one preacher in Bobby Yates? Is something, I no, I, I forgot his name, but like he's he's like a preacher and he's, um, you know, just. Uh, there, there's videos of that as well, too. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see if I, if I can find that, I'll send it to Wes and put it up on here. Yeah, dude. And this is just kind of stuff we talk about, but I just realized as you were saying that, our fans at home were probably, like, listening to us till you said our source was TikTok. Yeah, I know. It's like, we've been doing some hardcore investigation on TikTok. On TikTok, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're uh, middle-aged men. That's fine. <laughs> but, no, dude, there's so much out there, dude. But to kind of circle this up, because we're eight minutes from uh, Beer Church, and we're going to have a quick uh, refreshment before we hit the road again. Mark. I'm so happy to be driving to Michigan with you. Oh, yeah, definitely. The reason, besides the fact that I have a weird affinity for some old podcasts, and Adam Carolla and Drew did in a bus, I think some of the greatest conversations I've had were always in cars with brothers on the way to events, stuff that makes all, like, if we could put out what we, our uncensored car self. Oh, God. Like, I mean, we are, the Grand Lodge will get rid of us, but, the, <laughs> but, it's, but it's so good, dude. So I'm so happy to be riding with you. I know we started this strong because we're on that we're hot on the campaign trail, you know. Be vote, be victorious with Victoria. How the hell ever we want to say this, but you're running for Grotto's International Grand Captain of the Guard. With all my, with my word, my money, whatever I got on the line, you are the best guy for the job. Thank you. I'm glad you've stuck it out through these years, and actually, I, I got respect for you on that because there's been a couple dudes. Who were like, oh, well, if I want to get elected, I want to go again. I'm like, well, dude, if you, it's it's, it's like a lifetime job. It is a lifetime job. Because it's seven years, then you have a junior position, then maybe you want to go over to the foundation, but you're going to be wearing that gold tassel to conventions till you're dead. Yeah, yeah. People are going to look to you for leadership till you're dead. Yeah. So if you get discouraged quickly, this is probably not going to be it for you today. Because I mean, I, and I, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but... If you can't be on the campaign trail for a few years, what about when your first idea isn't received properly? Are you going to get discouraged and bounce then? Dude, this is a long road, brother. It, it, it's a long road, and um, and and you're right. If there's you know past grands 
you know, who come to Supreme Sessions every year, and they still do stuff. You know, Hostler, you know, he's he's part of, um, I know he's part of, like, the committee that, that counts ballots, you know. He's um, part of HF now. Oh, yeah, part yeah. of HF. Um, I know Dave Redman, you know, out of Abbas, he's, you know, he's part of, like, the ritual committee, you know. So, like, you know, once you're done as Grand Monarch, you're not done. You know, you're still helping out the... Um, you know, you're still helping out both the Grotto and Freemasonry in general, because I know, like, what, Tali's going to be in, in the in the Grand Lodge of Florida. Yeah, no, totally, dude. And then, I mean, you got other guys bouncing around, too. It's wild, dude. Hey, you know, actually, speaking of Dave Redman, did you say his wife was part of that whole us giving a bunch of money to Dolly Parton's I can charity? see it. Um, oh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you fact-checked that. I didn't, I didn't fact-check it, but it, it just had strong inkling of it, just because... She used to be an English teacher. Where, where, where do I exit? I uh, wear the first exit because we was under Pew in Michigan. Okay. Cue the cue the whole time music. But we're gonna get off at this first exit. Then we're gonna make a left. And we're going downtown to Buffalo. Okay, sounds um, good. No, no. But um, re- real quickly, she she was a uh, English teacher in uh, Morton and um, very big into reading. That's like was one of her uh, projects, uh, getting books and all that stuff. So um, so it just it just seemed like a natural progression for her to really maybe. If she if this wasn't her idea, at least like you know she put probably some sweat and tears yeah. into that. And I know that was from I believe, oh no not this Michigan Center rest area no. Oh, no 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 not the rest area I'm sorry Harbor County yeah 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 okay. sorry about that but they're, like it's not like you're about to get off again I'm sorry yeah the new but this first new Buffalo exit okay so but no dude but she's awesome and I know that was from the Illinois Masonic Children's Assistance Program out giving some money to Dolly's charity. And past monarch of Abbas Grotto, uh, Robert Hunsaker, who's also a widow's son, amazingly clutch dude. Him and his wife are beautiful people. We've worked Special Olympics together. I know they were out there, but either way, dude, I guess I kind of went on a jag, but hey, it was cool to see Mason's best with that. There's like eight weed dispensaries right here. Yeah, welcome to Michigan. Yeah, and there's never a Michigan plate at any of them. <laughs> because they're all Indiana. Or Illinois. No, it's mostly Illinois. Well, I mean, we got, we got dispensaries here. No, our dispensaries suck. Yeah, they know. These, these are fun. These are like going in a wild flea market. Make a left. Oh, left? Yeah, left. I'm sorry. Actually, the first time I ever felt like a boomer, though, was in one of these. Because I was like, hey, I don't really care, like, what people do. I was actually, I was even picking up for another brother in Illinois. Cause he, but either way, so, because I really, and that's not my scene. But I was like, look, I don't care if you're selling lawnmowers, propane, or weed. You can't wear Cookie Monster pajamas to work. <laughs> so, King of Buds in New Buffalo, you uh, brought the boomer out at me. So, thank you. <laughs> I don't know, man. I love you. We're up. Uh, we're about three minutes from Beer Church, and this is we'll hit the show on the way out of town. Um, either way, Mark, thank you for forming this podcast with me. Of course. Marty and Mark's car cast was awesome. Uh, if you feel froggy and not too exhausted, maybe do another episode tomorrow about everything we saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. yeah, dude. But God bless you guys. Love be you good. guys. All right, be good. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mark from Ed Refreshment Masonic Video Podcast. Um, I know that Marty and I uh, promised a second recording on the way back, uh, but personal stuff happened, so we couldn't do that. But uh, we are going to do a recap podcast uh, sometime this week, so uh, keep an ear out for that. All right? I'll catch you guys later. Brother on.